Here's the thing. The Rams make it to the Super Bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think in the in the uh, in, in interest of full disclosure, I should point out, I'm a lifelong Rams fan. I grew As up loving the Rams. Uh, they they got, I'm a season ticket holder. I, I was oh, thrilled wow. when they came back to town. Uh-huh. Um, and covered them over the years. Uh, and so it's it's been a lifelong dream to see them go to the Super Bowl here in Los Angeles. That's right. Uh, they're a great football team, but... Are they going to get bad neck, b- back next year to the Super Bowl? That's a big question. A, it's hard to do, okay, number one. Uh-huh. And number two, Todd Gurley. I mean, that's a big question mark. I'm a little bit on the nervous side for uh, for Todd Gurley. Oh, that's the uh, My Radio Show hotline. Uh, on, the, uh, on the line with us now, DeMarco Farr out of the University of Washington. DeMarco was, a, was an undrafted free agent by the, the Rams. An undrafted free agent. You know how, how hard that is? 1994. He played until 2000. Made the Pro Bowl in 99 after eight and a half sacks. I can't figure out why he didn't make it in 95 when he had 11 and a half sacks. Super Bowl champ in 2000. He didn't do it in L.A., which I have a beef about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 36 <laughs> and a half sacks in his career. But here's the most impressive stat. Uh, three interceptions. DeMarco Farr oh. on the phone with us, ladies and gentlemen. DeMarco, how? First of all, can you give me your playing your playing stats? What was your what was your height and weight in uh, in uh, when you played with the Rams? Six one two seventy six. Six on one, a good day. Uh, okay, so uh, and you were a defensive lineman. How on earth did you wind up with three interceptions? Is that a, did I read uh, you know that wrong? What? It's it's funny. Uh, one of my crowning achievements in, in the NFL is I picked off Warren Moon. Oh, and I'm so happy every time I see Warren Moon, I remind him I picked you off. Big time. Uh, okay. And I ran right by him. <laughs> Did you really? Did by the way, was that Absolutely. a pick? Was it a pick and go? Uh, it, it was a it was a, a tip ball that I got my hands on yeah. and Warren Moon, being the old school quarterback that he is, ran out of bounds <laughs> and fell down and just kinda watched the play. Grabbed as his hamstring. Oh boy. I'll never forget uh, it. It was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> so uh, we we want to teach our uh, listeners uh, uh, on radio and also the, our viewers on uh, on Facebook a little bit about football every once in a while. Uh, defensive tackle or nose tackle? Uh, the, you know, their nose. Is, well, I want you to explain the difference. Were you a defensive tackle or were you a nose tackle, or did you kind of move along the line? And what's the difference? Oh, this is funny. Okay, if you're a fan of Aaron Donald, we did the exact same thing. And you're, by the way, same. You're same it. measurements, aren't you? Pretty much same measurements. He's just doing a whole lot better than I did. So. If we had uh, like a highlight film, I would have similar highlights. It would just be a whole lot shorter. So I'm a three technique. I play on the outside shoulder of the guard. Um, uh, they put me in, in situations where I can get to the passer, uh, the passer faster. Okay. Nose tackle is the exact opposite. You're on the wrong side of the freeway, and you're holding up traffic by yourself. Mm-hmm. That's your job. Okay. Uh, Rams odds to win the Super Bowl. I was in Vegas a couple of weekends ago, so I bought my Rams to win the Super Bowl ticket. Uh, odds were 12 to 1. I was surprised. Not exactly a favorite to return. The Chiefs, the Pats, the Saints, all ahead of them. You have a Super Bowl ring from 2000. Um, it's hard to get there, but is it true that it's harder to get back? Oh, yeah. I, it's crazy. I, I tell the guys now, uh, whenever they ask, uh, b- before the Super Bowl, before the playoffs even began, I said, look, if you go the entire route, if you win the whole thing, you're going to still be on the parade float, and it's going to seem like you get right off into training camp. Uh, being a defending champ, or at least defending NFC champ for the Rams right now, uh, it's it's going to be tough because you're everybody's big game. Uh, you don't have games where you can just ease into it. Every game is going to be a Super Bowl for the other team you're playing. So you have to understand that. Uh, you have to coach for that, and you have to play that way. You have to have that mindset. So uh, that's why Belichick and the Patriots are so impressive. They've been able to keep that mindset for years, for, for a decade. So it's tough to do, especially when teams turn over every single year. But if you have the right leadership in place and the right core group, it can be done. Former L.A. Ram and St. Louis Ram, DeMarco Farr, he's also a current uh, analyst. I'm going to call you an analyst, DeMarco, because you you do a little bit of everything. I, I watch you on the website over at Rams.com. Uh, you do stuff there. You're on the sidelines. You're, I think you've been in the booth. You've been. I've seen you. I've we run into each other in the newsroom when you would go to the studio over there. Um, but uh, so you do a little bit of everything. Uh, I grew up a Rams fan. I am far from an apologist when it comes to my team. I tend to be glass half empty. Uh, so I'm going to tell you my concerns, and you fill up the glass for me. Offense, left, right. guard, left guard Roger Saffold, center John Sullivan, replaced by two two-year players. I'm worried. Should I be? Uh, you know, it's fair to be worried about Joseph Noteboom and, and Brian Allen. Uh, but let me tell you this. Physically, uh, I think you might have gotten better there. John Sullivan, I love him to death. 
one of the smartest players I've ever seen he's or been mean. around. But he's kind of mean too, isn't he? I mean, one of those kind uh, of mean, kind of one of those mean cer- players, right? To certain people, he can be mean, but I mean, I think he had reached his his end physically. So there's going to be an upgrade physically with Brian Allen. You're going to be able to move people off the point because. This guy's neck, biceps, and, and thighs are all the same size, and he doesn't have a neck. Uh, so you're going to be fine there as long as he can you know, learn the game, the speed of the game. That's, there's going to be a learning curve there, but physically you're going to be fine. Joseph Noteboom, to me, I think might be one of your best athletes on the offensive line. If you remove Andrew Whitworth from the offensive line, he is your best athlete. I mean, the guy can do anything. You can line him up just about anywhere, and he's technically sound, and he has a good coach to boot. So – uh, it's fair to be worried, but I would say that goes away by October. Okay, let's shift over to defense. Run defense, uh, one of the, the very few flaws. Uh, they had a little trouble stopping the, the, the run. They have uh, their young up-and-coming safety, LaMarcus Joyner, left. Uh, Mark Barron, uh, one of the linebackers, left. they got two vets who've had terrific careers, Clay Matthews and Eric Weddle, but they are long in the tooth. I'm worried. Should I be? Ah, uh, you know, it, it. I think as far as the run defense, I think that goes as Jared Goff and the offense goes. If they continue, and Sean McVay, if they continue to pile up points and put the pressure on the other team's offense to keep up, then the run game goes away. Even with Ndamukong and Sue, who outside of Aaron Donald is the strongest guy I've ever seen play defensive tackle. So uh, even when you had Sue, you still had problems slowing down the run game. That's just, that's how it is. Uh, in, in certain defenses and, and today's NFL, so and who you're playing. But as far as if you can get teams in your wheelhouse, if you can stop them on first and second down or at least slow them down and get them the third down, you've got guaranteed pressure with 99. He is going to get to your quarterback. He is going to affect the play. So if you can somehow, like we did back in 99, go to, you know, we got you down 7 nothing and then 14 nothing. Once we got you down 14 nothing, we're pass rushing and we're going to get to your quarterback. So if the offense does what it needs to do, I think the defense will do what it needs to do as well. Okay. I buried the lead question. What's going on with uh, Todd Gurley's knee? Does he have arthritis? He was uh, absent during some of the offseason activity. He wasn't absent completely, but he was training on his own. Is this guy going to be 100% when the season rolls around? Uh, good question. Um, you know, who knows? I, I think it's, it, it's, it's an issue. It's there. It's, it's something he has to deal with, but... He's not unlike anybody else in the NFL. I mean, everyone has something that you have to deal with, even Eric Weddle. Uh, you, you have to deal with something and overcome it. But as far as Todd, his mentality, the, the fire that burns within, all that, he's got that. And then when I saw him, I hadn't seen him since the Super Bowl, or at least on the field doing workouts. And then when I saw him, and I, he looked leaner. He looked stronger. He looked bigger. And he looked PO'd. Mm. That is the guy that can overcome any sort of injury. And let me say this. I remember when I was playing, Curtis Martin had, I think, a torn ACL or didn't even have an ACL, and this guy ran himself into the <laughs> Hall of Fame. So, And Marshall Falk, his yeah. knee oh. was worse than mine, and really? my knee retired me, and he ran yeah. himself into the Hall Isn't of Fame. It? So, it, you know, you can report on the injury all you want, but if Todd is upright and healthy and physically able to go, he's one of the best in the league. Okay, uh, one-word answers. Best quarterback you sacked? Oh, God, that's tough. Um, the most satisfying sack of my life was yeah. knocking Jim Kelly's helmet off oh! <laughs> because he talked so much trash. <laughs> I love that more than enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, more than we used to hear that Favre would uh, be kind of a trash talker too. Yeah, uh, big time. Right. I mean, Jim Kelly would look at you and talk about your butt. <laughs> I mean, this is when he had his his hands under his center's butt. Uh, I can't. By the way, Demarco, I, I have <laughs> seen your butt. By the way, I, okay, I, I get I get why he. See, might don't get... start Jim Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Best best player you played either with or against during your basically oh, best during your player. Uh, that's uh, best player I ever played with. Uh, I got to say Isaac Bruce uh, oh, should be in the uh, Hall of Fame. Um, receiver. You know, consummate professional, just an absolute assassin on the field. Jackie Slater's in there. Jackie oh, yeah. Slater welcomed Jackie. me into the NFL with a two fisted punch to the face and knocked <laughs> me down, and no one did anything about it. Uh, best player uh, I ever played against. Uh, without a doubt, Bruce Matthews. Clay Matthews oh, yeah. is uncle, I believe. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what happened on the first five plays of the Super Bowl because I was on my face and he was on my back. Uh, we okay. So yeah. uh, we've got a short amount of time here. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to get to Demarco to come back when we get closer to the season because I, I can talk to this guy all day long. All right, this is gonna be a quick little segment we call um, "How Well Do You Know the Host?" How well do you know the host? Okay. All right, this Rams player was one of my idols growing up. 
Just take a stab. This Rams player was one of my idols growing up. Just take a stab. And then Eric I'll, Dickerson. Then I'll give you some hints. That's a good guess. I, I think <laughs> Eric, one of the greatest uh, running backs of all time. All right, here's a hint. He wore blue and white. Jack Snow. Merlin Olsen. Wait, you're getting close. Jones. Wait, stop. Hold it. Wait a second. I always – this is your last hint, DeMarco Farr. I always signed birthday cards to my mom with the number 18. Is that Roman? Roman Gabriel. No. Wow, yes. It is Roman Gabriel. It is Roman okay. Gabriel. You were- That's right. Oh, my gosh. I bump into a bunch of Roman Gabriel fans Do every you? day, and they always ask, did you guys play together? And I'm like, <laughs> you know how old I am? <laughs> uh, Roman Gabriel. I signed every single birthday card or, or holiday card to my mom, number 18. I was That was just my era. That's, That's awesome. I grew up in. I uh, used to go to the, the games. I didn't get to see him play in person. Uh, by the time I got to go to a game, it was, I think, James, James Harris was the quarterback at the time. But No kidding. You know what? Pass that on to Jared Goff. Make sure he understands how special that spot is and where you oh are. Oh, my gosh. You are because you're going to be connected with kids for life. For the rest of your, rest of your life. That's right. All right. Yeah, DeMarco Farr, yeah. thank you so much for being uh, on uh, my radio show with Rick Garcia today. And, uh, you got it. Hopefully we'll continue to have you on in the future. Thank you so much. No doubt. Anytime, man. Let me know. You got it. All right.